and welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying our channel, hit the subscribe button and the like button down below as we're always releasing new content. Enjoy! Hi everybody, this is Avi from AF Math and today we are doing our part 3 of our project management series and our topic today is the critical path method or CPM. We're going to explore AOA network and logic network. So what is CPM? CPM is the critical path method, is the sequence of scheduled activities that determines the duration of the project. Now, I know it's a big uh, definition, but let's take an example. Imagine throwing the best house party ever. So what do you need to throw the best house party ever? Let's say that we have three ladies here that are throwing the party. They are starting to organize at 1 p.m and it will take them a few hours to organize everything. So they have three tasks, prepare the food, buy alcohol, and prepare the house. If you can see each task takes one hour, two hours, and three hours. These are called activities or tasks. Each lady will take care of a different task and all together they will finish uh, preparing for the party in three hours. Now ask yourself, which activity or task controls the schedule, okay? Which is the most critical from those three activities? And the answer is this one. The person preparing the house needs to start at one and finish at four. And if she will start at two, it means that the party can only start at five. While the person preparing the food, they can start at two, or even three and still finish at four o'clock. That's why this task controls the schedule. So as I said, preparing the house is the critical activity as it is the longest activity. If we delay it, we might have to delay the beginning time of the party. In contrast, the lady preparing the food will have an extra two hours to play with. We call this extra time floats. In this time, she can choose to start early, start late, finish early or finish late as long as he or she does not go over the time agreed to start the party. Now, here are some key concepts. Total float. Total float is the maximum amount of time an activity can be delayed from its early start without delaying the entire project or violating a schedule constraint. Early start, the earliest time on which an activity can start within project constraint. Early finish, the earliest time on which an activity can finish within the project constraints. Late start, the latest time on which an activity can start without extending the project's duration. Late finish, the latest time on which an activity can finish without extending the project's duration. A logic network, a diagram showing the project activities and their logical relationships. And the last one, an AON network, a network diagram in which activities are represented by a node box connected with arrows or lines. Here is our first example. For the activity presented in the table, draw the logic network and perform the CPM calculation. So as you can see, we have activity A, B, C, D from A to G, our preceding activity over here and the duration for each activity over here. I've just taken the liberty of putting the table from before, so I will have uh, more space to walk here in the middle. And if you remember the definitions, I've set them out here in this three by three box, and each definition is here in its box. So what is an AON network? An AON network is simply taking activity A and saying activity A goes to B, and C. As we can see, activity A doesn't go anywhere, it's the first activity, and then activity A goes to B and C. That's it, we can continue with this network, but it's a waste of time. So let's go right ahead to the logic network, which is the main issue in this uh, video. So a logic network, we take the same A, and we write it over here, and here we write the early start, total floats, late start, early finish, total floats, and late. And we start by writing what we know. We know that the early start is zero, because A is our first activity, so that is our early start. 
the duration of the activity is 4, so 0 plus 4 equals EF, equals the early finish. The earliest this activity could start is after 4 days. Okay, now we can connect this activity to B and C. And if our early finish is after four days, which means that activity B and C can only start, their early start can only be after four days as well. So for my ES, I'm going to write four here. And for my duration, I'm going to write seven and five. Now, what's my EF for B? Four plus seven equals 11. And what's my EF? For C, 4 plus 5 equals 9. Let's take our logic network a bit to the left so we'll have more space to work and let's continue. We have activities, let's see what's coming from B. From B we have activity D and activity E and from C we have activity E and activity F. So let's set them up. Activity D is the first one with a duration of 8 days. Activity E follows it with a preceding activity from B and C with a duration of five days. Activity F coming from activity C with a duration of two days. Now tell me what would be our early start for D? Of course, 11. 11 plus eight equals 19. Now tell me what would be our early start for F? Obviously nine, nine plus two, 11. And now for the interesting question, what would be my early start for E? Is it 11 or 9? Well, the way we choose it is that we pick the bigger of the two numbers or the bigger of the two activities. So as 11 is bigger than 9, our answer is 11. 11 plus 5 equals 16 and that is my EF. Moving on, my next activity, activity G. Activity G comes from DEF and has a duration of one day. What is my ES? Again, Pick the bigger of the three activities this time. And we have 19, 16, and 11. So my ES for G will be 19. 19 plus 1 equals 20. So now that we finish going forward, we need to start going backwards. How do we go backwards? If activity G earliest finish is after 20 days and I have no more activities, then my late finish should also be after 20 days. So EF equals LF. Now, how do I calculate the LS? LS equals LF minus the duration, 20 minus one equals 19. Now I'm going backwards. I'm sending this late start to activities D, E, and F. And I'm just placing the 19 over here because we don't have any other activity adjoining them and when you kind of think about it you'll understand the logic behind it think about late finish and late start with activities going one after the other so let's start to calculate my late start first late start for activity d 19 minus 8 equals 11 late start for activity e 19 minus 5 equals 14 and late start for activity f 19 minus 2 equals 17 now we need to decide which number goes for my late finish for activity b is it 11 or 14 and this time we pick the smallest of the two. Remember when we are going forward, we pick the bigger of the two. When we are going backwards, we pick the smaller of the two. 11 and 14, the answer is 11. And for activity C, 17 and 14, the answer is 14. Now let's calculate the late start for activity B. 11 minus seven equals four. And for activity C, 14 minus 5 equals 9. Now we have two numbers again, 4 and 9. Which one of them is smaller? Obviously 4 and 4 minus 4 equals 0. And we came back to our late start, which has to equal our early finish because the earliest we can go is 0, means the latest that we can go is also 0. Let's clean up the board a little bit and give you just the numbers without the calculation to make it easier for you to watch. And the only thing that is missing for me is the total floats. This is the next thing that I'm going to calculate. Now for the total floats, let's start by going backwards again. Okay, and we're saying that in activity G, EF equals LF 
and ES equals LS, okay, as we can see over here from our calculation. And we take these two numbers and we say first, my first total flow, LS minus ES, 19 minus 19 equals zero, and LF minus EF, 20 minus 20 equals zero. A hint that you should notice, your total float should always equal. So if you get a different number here, then you know that you've made a mistake somewhere along the way. So now let's start going back. What are the total floats for activity D? 19 minus 19 and 11 minus 11, 0 and 0. Activity E, 19 minus 16 equals 3. And 14 minus 11 also equals 3. Now activity F, 19 minus 11 and 17 minus 9 equals 8 on both sides. And moving on to activity B, 11 minus 11 equals 0 and 4 minus 4 equals 0. Activity C, 14 minus 9 and 9 minus 4 both equal 5. Moving on to my final or first activity, 4 minus 4 and 0 minus 0. And that's it. Our table is now complete. Now we need to understand, you remember the example in the beginning? We need to understand which of these activities are the same as preparing the house. That if we delay one of them, we will delay the entire project. And the best way to see it is that the activities that doesn't have any floats, which means there is no free time in these activities, those are my critical path. If you remember from the example before, my total floats are my free time. So if I have any free time to do anything, for example, preparing the food, I have two hours of free time, it means that activity is not critical. Those activities we can assign and reassign and play with. But with these activities, A, B, D, and G are critical for the project. Um, just for general knowledge, there could, be, there could be more than one critical path. For example, it could take us three hours to prepare food and three hours to prepare the house and only two hours to buy the alcohol. So we would have more than one critical path. Join us for the next video as we further expand on CBM. Hope you enjoyed.